Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Subatomic, which is an atom building game. And I'm going to be doing a two player run through today so you can see what it's all about. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then a welcome to the Subatomic Realm, everybody, where players are competing to create atomic elements as fast as possible, like helium and lithium and beryllium, let's say, uh, because they are worth their mass in points. And to be able to create these atoms, we have to combine protons, neutrons, and electrons, plus spend a little bit of energy. And uh, to be able to get those uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons, we have to use our starter deck, which is full of three of the most basic of basic building blocks, up quarks, down quarks, and photons slash gamma rays. So, everybody has a deck of 11 of those right from the get-go. And uh, like any good deck builder, you always have a hand of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cards right from the start of your turn. And I'm going to start playing these cards. Now, what have I got here? Well, Okay, I've got two photons. Two photons can be converted into an electron. And I know that, and remember electrons being one of the three building blocks I need to make these atoms. I know two photons, or gamma, photons slash gamma rays, can make an electron because I'm reminded of it right here on my player aid. Two electrons, or you know, two photons equals an electron. Also, two up and one down quarks makes a proton. One up and two down quarks makes a neutron. So, I've got then up and two downs, so that means I could convert this into a neutron. And now, there are two ways I could do that. I could take one of these three little markers here and indicate I now have one neutron. I could spend these three cards to make my first neutron. If I do it again later, I can make my second, my third, my fourth, my fifth, my sixth neutron. Um, this is where I'm actually building my atom. If I want to make helium, I've got to make one, two uh, neutrons, one, two protons, and one two electrons. Once I've done that, I can get four points off that sweet helium atom that I'd make. But the interesting thing is, if I spend all these lobby cards trying to do that, then I'm not actually building my deck. I could instead spend an up and two downs to buy a neutron card if one were here on the display. Now, unfortunately, there isn't one. Um, so if I want to spend all these, I can get that first neutron. And then that would leave me these two cards, which I could use to get myself an electron. Uh, because remember, two photons makes an electron. Now, I could get this electron. I could mark, hey, I've got my first of two electrons I need. Or instead, I could buy this electron card. So it goes in my deck. So then in the future, it's easier for me to get electrons without having to, you know, I can basically have one card do the work of two. Um, and you can see down on this card, there's a reminder. This is what it gives me if it's in my deck. This is what it costs. It costs two photons to make an electron. But there's an additional cost. If I want this electron, I also need one energy. And I have no energy at the beginning of the game. How do you get energy? Well, it comes back to the cards. Every card can be played face up for its face value. In this case, I could play all these to get that neutron. Or they can be played face down to give you energy tokens. And we need these energy tokens to basically get anything out of this, this, or this column. We need one, two, or three energy. We also need energy to, in addition to the atomic structure to put together our chosen atom, we need five, four, or three energy, depending on which one of these it is. We also need energy to get scientists on our side. In this game, I've got uh, Erwin Schrodinger, Albert Einstein, Marie Curie, and uh, Maria Gopert Mayer. And this game, we won't have Niels Bohr or Joseph J. Thompson in the game. And uh, uh, Irwin here needs four. Albert needs six. Maria and Marie, they both need eight energy. I could just play all five of my starting cards face down just to get five energy. That would give me more than enough energy to recruit my first Schrodinger card. But I would like to actually get start deck building, because this is a deck builder game. It's a deck building, atom building game. So, I will go on ahead and play two, fro uh, two uh, photons. Which means uh, that will that's why I need to get this electron, uh, but I need one energy. How am I going to get it? I will dump one of these down. I'll play this face down. I'm playing these face up and this face down. This gave me the energy I needed, which I spend immediately to get this electron card. And whenever you get a card, it immediately goes in your discard pile. Now, I've still got two cards in my hand. 
A single up and down cork will do nothing for me, but I've got a couple of options. I could go on ahead and play these face down as well and start stockpiling energy for later, because you definitely need energy. Alternatively, I don't have to play these cards. I could keep one or both of these cards in my hand. That means at the end of my turn, I'd fill back up to five, so I'd only draw three or four cards. And often, if you're trying to get the right combination of cards, you'll choose not to play one, keep it in your hand, and then keep drawing from your deck until you get the combination of things you need because of the card you want to buy. Now, as it is right now, it's early on. I'm just going to play both of these face down, joining my other stuff. That gives me the two extra energy that I'll be able to use later on. And that's it. I've played all these cards. They all go in my discard pile. And now at the end of my turn, I draw one, two, three, four, five more cards. And I'm good to go. So, it is now Jen's turn. Let's uh, shuffle her deck a little bit more. Uh, the, the deck starts with three um, photons, four up quarks, and four down quarks. So there's 11 cards in her total. One, two, three, four, five for her starting hand. And let's see what she's got. Okay, oh, now this is an interesting element as well. If, when you draw your hand, it's interesting, the rules say whenever during your turn, um, but I've seen online that the developer has uh, clarified it's supposed to be at the beginning of your turn. If uh, at the beginning of your turn, when you draw your hand, if you have matching three, three matching cards, and you're like, oh, well, that really kind of ruins my hand, I need something better, you can discard one of those matching cards and draw again. And um, because, I I'll be honest, I mean, uh, you know, this down plus these... Two, oh, I'm sorry. Before we get to Jen's turn, I had to re refresh the board. So these ones just got a little bit cheaper, and a new one came out. That was important. Okay, there's that Neutron I wanted to buy, although it's very expensive at the three energy cost. So anyway, so here's my problem. I've got an up... Or I've got a down and two ups. That lets me get a Proton, which I'll be able to get, right? Or Jen will be able to spend these to get that Proton. And then she's got a Photon and an up. Quark still in her hand. Those don't do any good. But since she started with three of a kind, she will discard one of these and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully draw another photon. She did not. All right. Well, okay. So, uh, all right. That's just one thing you can do at the beginning of your turn. So here we go. What am I going to do now? Uh, Jen, well, so now she has a choice. She could do one up and two downs or um, one down and two ups. But since there's a proton here that's free, and there's a reminder right here, you need two ups and one down, Jen will pay the two ups and the down to add a proton to her deck. And so now she's got these two cards. Hmm. All right. She'll turn this. She'll play this debt face down to get herself start building up some energy. And this photon. Does she want energy? I don't know. There are. There's somewhere in, amongst these remaining cards. There are two more photons. And you know, you know, Jen may very well draw both of them together. But if she only draws one, then she'd like to hold on to this so she could combine those two photons to make an electron on her next turn. But she feels pretty good. Um, you know, what are the chances that this card at the bottom of the deck is the other photon? She'll go on ahead and play this face down as well to give herself some energy also. So that is not at all an uncommon start to uh, uh, to do that. Let's see here, and. Right. So she, oops, have I done everything here? Yeah. She she uh, got her proton, which cost her the, all right, the, the proton was the one down and two up. So she played those. She played this for some energy, and she just dumped her proton to get rid of some more, and her turn is over. She draws back up to five. One, two, three, four, five, and she got both her photons. Okay, so that's a good thing. One, two, three. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no. Three, four, five. Right, because I forgot. She drew an extra card. So she's gone through her whole deck once now. All right. So that was Jen's turn. Her turn is over. And it is now back to me. And meanwhile, oh, the wild card has gotten cheaper still. Now there is no excess energy that has to be paid. Although the cost for this is still... Um, one photon, one up, one down, and three energy to get this. If you pay all that, then anytime you want on a future turn, this could stand in for a proton, a neutron, or an electron. That's super powerful, but it's also very expensive. Can I afford it? Well, um, I have an up, and I have a down, and I have a photon. I just need three energy. I've got two, so my other photon isn't going to do me much good by itself. I'll play the other photon face down to get an energy, and then... I will pay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, not the phone. I'll, I'll pay this. Um, I'll pay this up cork face down to get that energy. Then I will pay the, my photon, my up, my down, and all three energy to get this card. Boom. Alrighty. And then I've got one card left over in up cork all by itself. I might as well get some more energy. 
All right, because I'm not necessarily building for anything in particular. That was my turn, and I got the big, sweet wild card. That will come in handy later on. Okay, and then I got to draw one, which means I got to shuffle up now. And that's near enough to damn it. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, Jen's turn. So here's her starting hand, and all right, so she could get herself another electron with these two photons, and well, again, she's going to have a choice. Would she just do the quick throwaway, uh, so she's starting to work on her atom, or would she spend these two plus two energy to add another electron card to her deck? Um, also, or is Jen going to do the same thing? This other cheap one came up, um, so that she could get this other wild. That's pretty tempting. Um, you know, I mean, and, and yeah, you know what? Okay, that's what she's going to do. Is she? Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, or, I mean, she'd like to get a scientist, too. How much is it going to cost? All right, so it'd be one photon, one up, one down, and then three. Because here's the thing. If Jen already has two energy, if she spends one, two, three, four of the five cards she's got, if she spends all three, one, two, three, four, five, if she just plays all these face down as energy, she could get one, two, three, four, five energy. That could be her whole turn. But in addition to playing these cards, getting some energy, Jen now has seven energy she could spend, six of it, one, two, three, four, five, six, and recruit Albert Einstein, which will give her this special power for the rest of the game every time she draws that. So she's not going to go for that. She's going to start, and because here's the interesting thing. The first Albert card costs six. The next one costs seven. The next one costs eight. So they do get more expensive. All right, so that will come in handy for her. And so she just spent everything to get Albert. She's just wild about Albert. And so she's got nothing. At the end of her turn, she's got to draw back up to five. So, and one, two, three, four, five. Her turn is over. And nothing, you know, emptied out there. So my turn. Oh, that's not my draw pile. This is, all right, that is my draw pile. Here's my hand. Okay. So, hey, my first big boy card came up. I have an electron. Now, um, I could play this by itself to make my first electron over here. Because remember, this is, I mean, I've been messing around with my deck. It's all about over here. This is how we score our points, by building these atoms that these blueprints are out here for. Um, and one photon by itself isn't going to do necessarily very much. Well, actually, that's not true. One photon, one down, and one up plus three energy would get me that, since it doesn't cost any extra. But I've got no energy. I could trash both of these, or, you know, not trash them. I could play them face down to give me two energy, but I'd be short, and I wouldn't be able to get that as much as I would like it. Hmm. What else could I do? What else could I do? Um, let's see. I have an up and two downs. That is a neutron. And if I take this, I've got a choice. I could spend one energy and get this neutron and add it to my deck, or I could start building an atom with a neutron, or if I had one more neutron plus two energy, I could get this upgraded card, which on a future turn gives me a choice of any time I play it, two neutrons or two energy. That would be huge, but I cannot pull off that second neutron yet. So I'm just going to play these plus one energy. I'll um, get rid of this single photon. I'll play it face down to give myself some energy. Then I will play these three plus an energy, so I've still got one left over, to give myself this neutron. And then I've still got one electron. A single electron. I could I could play this face down to get some energy. But you know what? I've already I've invested in this electron. I want this electron to go in towards giving me this card. I could play it right now just to give myself first electron, but I can do that next turn. If I hold on to this, I'm only going to draw four cards though. But I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm just going to keep that in my hand. So these are the four I played and the neutron I bought. And that means I get to draw four more. One, two, three, four. And we'll see how well that goes. All right. It didn't go as well as I'd hoped. Although, no, shoot. See, I, I was hoping. All right. Well, we'll worry about that on my next turn. It is Jen's turn. Okay. So she's got three ups and two downs. And remember, because she drew three of a kind, she could jettison one of these and draw something else, which she will do. And she got a photon, which is... All right. All right. Oh, and by the way, slide over. New stuff comes out. Hey, this hasn't gone yet. I think Jen will go on ahead and spend a photon and up and a down. She'll both these face down to give herself two more energy. And um, these three plus that three energy she has now gets her the wild card. So uh, Jen put off grabbing that. I didn't get a chance to get it myself. She got the cheaper Einstein. She's pretty happy with that. Slide on over. 
Although Jen is now out of energy again. And one, two, three, four, five cards for her. Back to me. Alrighty, what have I got here? Um, so I've got a down and two ups. This is this basically is a proton, um, which I could use to buy this proton, but I need two additional energy to buy it. Drat. Um, right, and I held on to my electron. So I've got a proton and an electron, which uh, doesn't really translate to any of these things down here. Um, I don't think I want to pay two extra energy to get this proton. So I'm going to go on ahead. Uh, you know, I didn't quite get the combo I wanted. I'm going to use this. I could have done this last turn to draw that. And I'm going to use this to make my first proton instead of buying more cards. And then this last photon by itself, do I keep it so that I can draw another photon so that I can get another one of these electrons? That might make sense. Have I already played all my other photons though? Nope, there's still a photon coming. So I'm just going to hold this in my hand, which means at the end of my turn, I draw back up to four and hey, there's that photon. So effectively, I got an electron. This is like two electrons right here. We'll see what I do um, with all of that on my next turn. Okay, nothing uh, slid over, went away. Jen's turn. Hey, Albert, what are you going to do? Well, so here's the deal. Before Jen plays any cards, she can pay up to three energy and add the same number of subatomic particles to the atom. So here's the problem. Albert came out too soon. Because ideally, when Albert comes out, Jen wants to have three energy on hand. Because if she does, she can basically spend that energy and immediately convert that energy into anything. A proton, a neutron, or an electron. And that could be a big jump towards finishing an atom. So, what Jen needs to do is she needs to play three of these face down to get the three energy. But then she will have already played cards, so she can't use Albert. So, she's going to hold on to Albert till next round. So, she is going to turn three of these into energy. She will... Oh, but if she uses two photons, that's another electron for free! But then she won't have enough energy to use Albert in the next round. Oh, what does she want more? I think she, I think she wants to use Albert's power more. So she is going to go on ahead and pay one, two, um, three. Because these are the basics. A proton is nice. She's going to save this for later. So she's going to pay these. This is goes face down, gives her three energy. All right. And she, uh, she's still got these. She's not going to play Albert now because she can't use him for his ability because she's already played other cards. She's not going to use this single proton by itself. I mean, she could. She could play this proton just to get going here. Yeah, she will do that. She's going to play this face up and get going on a proton. And she's holding on to Albert. All right. And so that was that. So she gets to draw four cards. One, two. And we got to shuffle again. Like any deck builder, a lot of shuffling in the early game as we start um, you know, making our deck. So far, nobody's gotten a big card. But Jen is going to be able to use Albert to good effect next turn to kind of jumpstart her um, her uh, element making. All right, so that was Jen's turn. My turn. All righty. So, hey, here's my wild. Okay. Um, and so, I think, do I want to use these to give myself a second electron? Because um, an up and a down aren't going to do anything by themselves. Right. So, uh, this could be a neutron. And I could use one more, get one energy, but I need one more neutron. I do not have another neutron to be able to buy this double neutron, double energy. Nor, to get this one, I need two energy and a proton and a neutron. This could be a proton and a neutron, but I can't pull it off. Drat! Okay. Um, I, I think I am going to hold on to this for next turn. Because if I hold on to this for next turn, hopefully I'll get a combo of cards that will let me start buying higher level stuff. I'm going to go ahead and play these to get this electron on the cheap. And these two, I'm just going to um, get rid of them to uh, get two more energy. And that was that. So that's what I played. I'm holding on to my wild. That means I get to draw four. And I'm hoping that means next turn, what I draw will be able to get me one of the heavy hitter cards. All right, let's see. Show me what you got, deck. One, two, three, four. All right. Meanwhile, Jen's turn. Um, oh, oops, and by the way, things slide on over. And it looks like Jen did, I forgot to draw her, redraw her cards because she only has three in her hand for some reason. Okay, so there we go. Oh, right, yeah, I had to reshuffle that I didn't draw. Okay, so what has Jen got here? This time, Jen is going to do it. She will first play Albert before she plays anything else. Uh, to pay up to three energy. She will pay all three energy and then add the same number of subatomic particles to your atom. So, Jen will go one, two. She's done both of her electrons 
and three. And just like that, Jen is almost ready to make helium. She's got the two electrons, she's got one neutron, one proton, she just needs one more of each, and five energy. Uh, which she just burned all that energy, but still. So Albert has done his job, and now Jen's got um, two ups and two downs. So, Jen could go on ahead and take the two ups and downs. She could use this to get one energy, and then she could spend that energy and the two ups and one down to get this proton. So there we go. So that was Jen's new turn. And, by the way, there should have been uh, new stuff out here, which but it was a bit too expensive for her anyway. So, um, slide, slide, slide. There we go. And it is my turn. And, alrighty, did I pull off what I'm looking for? Alright, so now I've got two ups and a down. Two ups and a down counts as a proton. So this is a proton. I can use this as a neutron. It can be a proton, neutron, electron. So I'm going to use this as a proton. This is a neutron. And um, I need three total energy because one, two, three. So I'm going to spend all three of my energy. I'm going to spend all these. And I grab this card. Now this is nice because in the future when I play it, it delivers one uh, proton and one neutron. That's what the little circle means. So that is a very powerful card. That's going to let me start speeding up every time I play. I'm going to start working. Well, I mean, it means I can also get better, more powerful cards, or I can start working on my atom that much faster. So I played all of these. All right. And then I've still got a photon left over. I'll just play it to start getting some energy back again. There we go. Jen's turn. One, two, three, four, five. What does she got? Okay. She's got a proton and she's got her wild card. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, do 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 do. Okay, so Jen's got a wild and a proton and two downs and a photon. That is not as exciting. And all right, so Jen certainly doesn't have two neutrons to be able to buy that. So I think what Jen is going to do, Jen need Jen's going to play this proton. She's got her second proton. She's going to play this as a neutron. She's got her second neutron. She now has everything she needs. Proton, neutron, electron. She just needs five energy. She has none. She's going to play the rest of these face down to get herself three energy. And next turn, Jen is going to finish helium. Um, and I mean, I'm nowhere near to it. So Jen's going to be the first to actually score some points in this game. All righty. Let's see how that goes for her. But in the meantime, one, two, three, four, five. So she's supposed to draw at the end of your turn, not the beginning. But I'm... Uh, all right. So... All right. Uh, one electron... And two downs and an up. Two downs and an up is a neutron. So this is a neutron. And so Jen has a neutron, an electron, and a photon. And right. So she'll go ahead and spend the electron to get her second electron done. She'll spend all of these to... Um, right. She'll spend this to get an, uh, this lone photon to get an energy. And then she'll spend the two downs and an up as a neutron. She'll spend the one energy she's just got to give herself another neutron base card. So that is, or not she, that's what I have done. Okay. All right. So, and then slide on over. I'm just building my deck stronger more. One, two, three, four. And Jen's got to reshuffle. Another wild has come out. And, well, I'll say that one, five. All right. And here we go, folks. What has Jen got? Okay. Albert didn't show up, so she doesn't have to worry about that. Because now that she's, oh! I forgot something, folks. Let's rewind for a little bit. Um, when Albert gets played, you saw Jen do her Albert's power, spend up to three to, get, to make three passes. I had the choice at the same time. All of the players could have spent one energy to add any one particle at the same time. I think I did have an energy at the time, so I took advantage of Albert and added a particle of my own. Let's say it was the uh, neutron. So I've got one, one, and two. All right. I totally forgot to do that. Folks, that's why you always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on, because I'm sure Paulo pointed out that I forgot to do that. All righty. So anyway, it is Jen's turn. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Um, and let's see. She's got two photons. That could be another electron over here. Uh, and she's got two up quarks, which aren't really much of anything. And then she's got her choice of a wild there. Well, let's come back to that in a second, because the first thing Jen is going to do... Or no, no. First thing Jen's going to do is say, hey, these two up quarks, she's playing them face down to give herself two more energy. And now she says, I'm going to make helium. She spends five energy because it's the most expensive in terms of energy right now. And she's got two protons, two neutrons, two electrons. So these all reset. You don't make change, by the way. 
Uh, you always spend everything, even if you overspend. And Jen has made helium, which is worth four points. Woohoo! Okay. And this uh, comes over here. And Jen now gets to exert her dominance in the end goal area control game. I haven't even mentioned that. You may have been wondering the whole time, hey, what's this over here? Uh, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, and an element set? Well... Because Jen has made helium, she can put two of her area control markers on any of these two areas except for helium. Because she made helium, she can't do that. So Jen could try to um, start making an inroad into scoring bonus points for lithium and beryllium. Or for lithium and borom. Or for, um, not helium, because she made helium. Or for lithium and creating sets, full sets of stuff. So there's lots of different ways she could go. Or she could just really double down and put two tokens here on lithium. Now what that means is, at the end of the game, whoever has the most of their cubes here on lithium scores three points for every lithium they have created over the course of the game. Um, and then whoever comes in second gets two points. So, Jen's got to decide right now two things. One, what is she going to try and commit to? And remember, since she made helium, she cannot claim helium. So she can't turn this card into extra points, but she could convert lithium, beryllium, boron, or full sets into extra points. Um, which one does she want? Which one does she want? Because there is a second element to this as well. You'll notice, randomly, these five little chips were placed as part of setup. It's going to be a different combination every time. The first player to put their tokens on one of these spaces gets to take that chip and use its ability. Um, do an Annihilation for free. Gain four energy. Take a single subatomic card. Just boom. Grab a card. Any card you want. Wow. Grab a card. Any card you want. Boy. I think Jen is definitely going to start trying to invest in developing Boron. Um, which means, if she's the master or the mistress of Boron, she gets two points, extra points for every Boron she's got at the end of the game. Because she wants that power. Now, she could, go, she could double down on that and try to really stake her claim. Because remember, it's a majority here. Whoever has the most gets two points. Whoever has second most gets one point. Or she could spread out. But even if she spreads out, she could, if she does like this, you know, focusing on Lithium and Boron, hey, there's some Lithium here. Boron will come out eventually. She can only take one of these. This would be get it, immediately get four energy or take a single subatomic card. I think she will actually spread out like that. She's going to try and uh, you know play the field. She will use this and take a single subatomic card. Jen would like this one, please. It's certainly the most valuable of all of them. Uh, she needed two protons and two neutrons and four plus one energy to do it. She just got it for free, yo. That is a big, big deal. Wow. So you can see why I kept saying, we are racing, racing, racing. And me, I was spending more time you know, building up my deck and all that, while Jen, she was using Albert to get to that atom as fast as possible. And she pulled it off. Okay. So that was that. Now, that was just one thing. Her turn is still on. She still got these cards. And so she can start using them for whatever she wants to do. Hey, um, she'll go on ahead and spend these two photons to give herself another electron. And she will... Hmm. Or, 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 is she going to do that? Yeah. I think she's going to do something else. Let's, uh, let's put these two photons back. She's not paying the two photons to get that free electron. Uh, remember, you can turn any of these into energy. And so far, the only thing you've seen me using energy for is paying the cost of these column headers or paying the cost of scientists. There are three other uses for energy that are listed right here on our little player board. And they are spend one energy, two energy, or X energy, depending, to do one of those actions. You can spend one energy to wipe a row and refill if you're looking for a particular combination of elements. Or not elements, those are up here. Uh, you, know, uh, you can spend two energy to draw an extra card if you're desperate for that last card to make the combo you need. Or you can spend X energy to annihilate two cards from your deck. Jen's going to do the last thing. She needs, right now, we're in a two-player game, so we start out requiring two energy on the Annihilate track. Jen needs two energy to annihilate two cards. She is going to not play these photons to get this electron. She's playing it face down to get two energy, and then she is spending that two energy to annihilate these two up quarks. Because Jen wants these out of the way to get to her sweet new super powerful card. Remember, Jen's got good cards here. So she wants these quarks gone. Jen just spent some energy to annihilate a couple of quarks. Um, and, all uh, right, which means she didn't buy that electron, but that's okay. You know, uh, right. 
Right, because she paid this to get the energy. Now, so Jen still got one card in her hand. She could pay this to start building up. And what the heck? She will start working on her electrons again. So there we go. And then these are the ones she paid for energy. She is done. And now at the end of the turn, slippity slide. Uh, they just slide over, new one comes out, and it's some helium, some more helium. All right, and that was Jen's very big turn, and she has started to thin out her deck. And after anybody uses the Annihilate action on their turn, Annihilation becomes potentially more expensive. From now on, it costs three energy to Annihilate two cards, and then three, and then finally, four energy. So, Jen was the first to recruit a scientist and... and, um, and uh, pay the cheapest price. Jen was the first to annihilate. Jen was the first to get a healing. But I'd like to think I've got a stronger deck. Although my stronger deck might not work that well for me because I haven't been thinning it out with all the low-level stuff so I can just get my high-level stuff when I need it. Uh, let's see how well my deck is going to treat me after all that amazing stuff Jen just did. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, I've got a Neutron and an Electron. That's nice. And then I've got three individual things that won't do me much of any good. Actually, that's not entirely true. I need a Photon, and Up, and a Down, and three Energy, plus three more to buy this wild card? That's not going to happen. So, urgh, so you can see why you want to thin out your deck so you can get to your good higher level stuff that much faster. These three cards by themselves won't do anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and use them to get three Energy. And, you know what? I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to get rid of an Electron, too, because I don't need any more Electrons on the Atom I'm working on. So I'm just going to use this to also get myself energy. So that's four energy I've gotten. I'm going to hold on to this new. No, I'm going to use this neutron to get my second neutron. So I'm building up for an element myself. And um, finally, this four energy I just got, I'm going to spend it all and recruit uh, Erwin Schrodinger. Who, his special power is, I can discard any number of cards from my hand and draw that number plus one. So who needs to thin out your deck when you've got a, a crazy and uh, imaginary cat who can dig through your deck that much faster to get the cards you need and get rid of the ones you don't? All right, and now uh, uh, Schrodinger got more expensive as well. So that's how I spent my five cards, just getting the energy I needed uh, and working on an atom, because that's what we're here to do. And now I reshuffle... And I'm going to draw back up five. And my deck's getting... I mean, my deck must be twice as thick as when I started out. So I got a lot of good stuff here. It's just a matter of, will I get access to it when I need it? I don't know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Ne going into next turn, I got an Electron. I got my super sweet one. This is a Proton and a Neutron. And, oh, wow. So I've got um, like two Protons or two Neutrons or you know uh, two Electrons. This is a nice combo. These aren't doing me much. Um, two neutrons and two energy means I'll be able to buy this next turn. And who cares if Jen's getting the early wins? If I keep getting these really high level value cards, that might make it up for me in the end. But folks, I don't know if we're going to see it in because we're going to stop right there. That should give you a pretty good idea of the ebb and flow of Subatomic. This is a very sharp, fast playing uh, game with a nice uh, you know dollop of deck building and area control and uh, I'm going to say fun education. I'll talk a bit about that in the final thoughts. I'm trying to, is there anything else I haven't really... Oh, the only thing I haven't mentioned is how's the game end? The game ends once somebody has gotten all of their uh, area control cubes out here. So, we're racing to build as fast as possible. Once somebody ends it, we finish the round and then we start tallying up points based on what has been made and um, who has the majorities in these different types. Cool, cool game, but Wait for the final thoughts to hear more in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.